is SUTV News, and it starts now. Welcome to SUTV News. I'm Ryan Borstelman. And I'm Taryn Smith. North Dakota has taken a big step forward. Sanford Health has become the first campus community partner for North Dakota State University. The collaboration's most recent project is the new Center for Life Sciences and Research and Application, which does research on genomics and bioinformatics. The project's focus will include research on breast cancer and certain rare diseases in children. NDSU and Sanford Health honored their partnership with a flag raising ceremony Wednesday morning. The thousands of jobs can, that are going to be created by that facility, the opportunities that means for our students and our graduates, uh, the opportunity and impact that has on our state's economy are, are all almost hard to fathom. Uh, the, the, the quantity is so large. The NDSU and Sanford Health flags will share the same pole to symbolize the new partnership. Students and faculty at NDSU got the chance this week to give back to the community. Approximately 750 North Dakota State University students and alumni participated at the big event. This event was a day, or was a day for North Dakota State community to give back, to show appreciation, and say thank you to the Fargo-Moorhead area. The volunteers got the chance to work at 70 different locations that included activities such as raking leaves, painting houses, and working on demolition projects. The big event was a student-directed service project headed by the NDSU Volunteer Network, Student Government, and Sigma Alpha. Uh, I've got a lot of other things I have to do besides do yard work, and so we are appreciating it very, very much. It's just a real blessing to us. Be bold, be bright, be fashion. This was the slogan for a recent Vogue event. The fashion apparel and business organization hosted its 12th annual spring fashion show on Wednesday in the Great Plains Ballroom. This function, function opened to all NDSU students focused on trends for spring and the upcoming summer season. The show is meant to provide insight to, into the hectic life of a fashion designer. Styles featured came from both local stores and the minds of creative students. Some students modeled their own designs. Um, I originally got my design from the 1930s with Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers movies, and she wears a lot of like flowy dresses, and that's where I got it from. So, and I just kind of, I've always wanted to do an aqua colored dress, and the beads were my idea, so. Well, it's pretty impressive that these students designed some of those outfits. They were really great looking. Yeah, they put together an entire fashion show as well, which is, which is something that you, you wouldn't expect you know, a, college, a college team to be able to do that well. You know, so. well. Coming up next, North Dakota high school students get a chance to compete with their scientific knowledge. We'll show you some of what they did right after this. I'm at bus to get to class on time. I don't have to use my car, waste gas, or waste time finding a parking spot. I'm at bus because their hybrid buses not only help our community and our state, but they're also helping our world. I'm at bus not only to get around campus, but to get around the Fargo community. The 25 different routes get me anywhere I need to be. There are many reasons to map bus. Come find yours. Join the herd. Be map bus strong. Jimmy John's, America's favorite sandwich. Delivery guys. Steps up, throws deep. Holloway is there at the five. Not at the two. Good start. Liza.
SUTV News is being brought to you by Stop and Go. Stop and Go. We're always there. Welcome back. North Dakota high school students got a chance to use the North Dakota State University campus this weekend. NDC Hope hosted the North Dakota Science Olympiad on Saturday. Approximately 650 high school students competed in the state science competition for a chance to advance to nationals. Students participated in a series of events to test their knowledge of the sciences. Both those events ranged from mousetrap vehicles and robotic arms to problem solving and knowledge tests. The top ranked team will represent North Dakota at the national competition held in Florida in May. Students put their advertising skills to the test. A group of NDSU undergrads created an open house at a local vintage shop. The students of the principals of PR and advertising teamed up with Revolver, a vintage store in downtown Fargo to help out with advertising. The open house took place Monday from 5 to 8. Using social media, the group invited the public to come see a variety of show shoes, jewelry, antiques, and locally created fashions. Customers I think what gives them some like real life experience on like you know how to plan an event or you know get the name out there for a business um, plus they get to the two of them didn't ever been here before so now they know of our store the store offers a variety of equal eco-friendly clothes and products revolver will also be opening other shop on Mondays thanks to an increasing amount of customers one heavily trafficked area just off campus is going through some changes the owners of Bison Block are constructing a new structure between the two existing buildings. The new space will include eight new apartments and 5,500 square feet of, com of commercial space. One prospective tenant to the new building will follow a burger bar theme. The owners of Bison Block, which houses the SUTV studio, believe the construction will be received well by students. With the sandwich places and, the, and our coffee shop, I think, have been a big advantage for the students so they don't have to get in the car, drive off campus, that they can have all those amenities basically on campus now. And uh, I think it'll help a lot of things. Some tenants of the apartments above Bison Block are currently without parking spaces as the building goes up. The owners say that construction will be completed by September 1st of this year. It's, well, it's, it's good to see that there are, uh, you know, more business opportunities open up near campus for students. Yeah, I'm excited that there will be more options for food in between classes. You got Jimmy John's, you have spicy pie, we have jitters, and now hopefully a burger bar, who knows what else is going in there. Yeah, that's definitely great. After this week's campus calendar, we'll take you to a hidden treasure at NDSU. Let's face it, presentations are an inescapable part of any student's college career. And no matter how hard we try to make our PowerPoints fun and engaging, they never seem to captivate our audience. But no more. Introducing Prezi, a website with incredibly simple tools that give you the ability to create dynamic, animated presentations for free. It will breathe new life into any presentation you need to make. So let's talk tech. To get started using Prezi, visit their homepage and click on Sign Up. Students can sign up for the EduEnjoy account by using their NDSU email as their username and listing NDSU as their university. With the EduEnjoy account, you'll receive 500 megabytes of storage space on the Prezi website and are able to keep your content private. You can even use your own logo instead of the Prezi watermark. Once you set up your account, return to the Prezi homepage and click the Learn tab. This page will give you some easy pointers to help you get up and running creating your own Prezi's. You can even upload existing PowerPoint or Keynote presentations and spice them up in Prezi. After you have experimented with the basic features of Prezi, the Explore tab on the Prezi homepage is a great place to gain inspiration for your own project and gain a greater understanding of the Prezi interface. So use Prezi on your next presentation and impress your classmates and professors. It's easy to use and totally free. Sign up today and start exploring.
there's a hidden treasure on the North Dakota State University campus. Unknown to many students and staff, NDSU is a secure vault filled with over $2 million worth of art. The collection contains work from student, faculty, local, and world-famous artists that can be seen around campus. The collection began in the early 60s and has grown with the addition of hundreds of new pieces over the years. This vault is extremely secure as the art in it contains is highly valued to the university. The pieces are shipped to the vault in large crates as the art department continues to expand the collection. Have an Andy Warhol piece, and that is valued over a million dollars. Um, but we ha also have um, pieces by Jasper Johns. One of the pieces we have here, one of his flag pieces. Um, we have a Dali, and we have a Picasso as well, and numerous other pieces. But the Andy Warhol is the biggest. And now we can show this the pieces and talk a little bit about who created them, when, what the media is, what the process is hoping that that'll tie in with, you know, chemistry, pharmaceutical, whatever kinds of students that are really disparate fields of study, to recognize that, yes, art can be part of everybody's everyday life. This week, students had the chance to empty out their closets. NDSU's rugby team held the first Shed Your Clothes clothing drive. The drive was held for students to donate their unwanted clothing materials. The event also gained the attention of the student body by playing rugby in some of the donated clothes. The donated clothing included both women's and men's clothes, which made for some interesting sights on the field. Some of the posters advertising the event had the slogan, Donate your clothes or we'll take them. Trying to have a clothing drive for the uh, Fargo-Moorhead Coalition of Homeless Persons. Basically, this is just going to be donated to people that need clothing for free, uh, can't afford anything. Um, usually they need these clothes just to get a simple job, you know, maybe minimum wage, anything, but a lot of people don't have even just basic clothes. Uh, so this is what we're trying to do right now is. NDSU's College of Business is keeping its accreditation as one of the top 5% business schools worldwide. The program recently went under accreditation review by the Association to Advance Collegiate Schools of Business. The review, which happens every five years, checks a variety of different things, including faculty qualification and interactions of faculty and students. Approaching very quickly for students at NDSU. This week's Sidewalk Stampede set out to get pointers on studying for these pesky tests. I, I personally, for studying, I like to get up at about 7 o'clock and study for two hours before class. That's about all I do for extra studying time. Okay, yeah, just be responsible and uh, don't go out too often so you can get enough studying in. Hey guys, uh, it's finals are coming up, so for studying tips, I just suggest, you know, don't pull all-nighters. Uh, spread out your work so you're um, always ready to go. Uh, make sure you get enough sleep. And that's all. Yeah, good luck. Who's studying? Who's, who studies? Come on. <laughs> all right, study for finals. I always go to the library because during finals week, it's open 24 hours a day. Well, it's about that time. Dead Week's coming up next week, and uh, studying is going to begin. Yeah, I definitely got lucky this year with only having to study for one final. Our sports anchor Morgan Lubin over here. Well, how's studying going for you? Well, it's going good, but I wish I only had one final to study for. Geez, I got three. I got a couple. <laughs> We're coming up in sports. We'll recap the green and gold game. Sports is after this. Buses not only help our community and our state, but they're also helping our world. I'm at bus not only to get around campus, but to get around the Fargo community. The 25 different routes get me anywhere I need to be. There are many reasons to Matt bus. Come find yours. Join the herd. Be Matt bus strong.
seven NDSU students in a documentary class set out to find and record intriguing stories. Hello, I'm Allie Weary. Join me next week for Working Title, a COM 348 production. Three documentaries take an inside look at a nonprofit radio station, a secluded archive facility, and a rivalry that wants to find a state. Join me May 3rd at 8 o'clock p.m. on SUTV Channel 84. There's always something happening on the NDSU campus. Catch it all on SUTV News on Cable One Channel 14. Brought to you in part by Shields and Stop and Go. SUTV Sports is being brought to you by Shields. Ready for your next big adventure? Welcome to Shields. Welcome back. Spring practice concluded for the Bison football team on Saturday with the annual green versus gold game. The defense was the highlight of the game that ended by a 3-0 score. Kicker Adam Keller had a 43-yard field goal in the fourth quarter to give the gold win over the green. The attendance total of 5,842 was a new record for the spring game. Junior linebacker Grant Olson finished with six tackles and a sack for the green. Redshirt freshman Alex Lavoie recovered the fumble that gave the gold the win. Offensively, Brock Jensen and Esley Thornton were a combined 9 of 18 for 77 yards. Not a whole lot of fireworks for fans, but a very important game for the players. Just gave us a chance to go out there and uh, be able to make some plays. And uh, you know, try to score some points, even though you know Keller got the, the only points on the day for us. But uh, you know, it was a good experience for a lot of young guys that haven't played a lot of football. And uh, you know, we got better. Complacency uh, can really take a program in the wrong direction. If you stay hungry, the bar is set high. You know, I really feel good about uh, the attitude of our players, the things that they've needed to do as far as their regiments and uh, off-season work, and, and you know, the attitude during practice has all been positive. The Bison open the regular season Saturday, September 1st against Robert Morris in the Fargo Dome. Wednesday, the Bison look to stay perfect against their baseball neighbors. The Bison are 4-0 against UND, 5-0 against SDSU, and tried for a perfect 3-0 against the U of M last night. To Newman Outdoor Field now, in front of a record crowd, 1,781 people. We'll start off in the top of the second where Tony Skefty hits a sacrifice fly to center. Bobby Wan will come in and score from third. Gophers strike first, one to zero. Still on the top of the second. Matt Poole gets hit by Anthony Klineski's pitch. It'll score Dan Olinger. Gophers up two to zero. In the bottom of the third now, Nick Anderson hits it sharp off the pitcher. Right back up the middle. They try for the out at second. Everyone's safe. Nick Kowal scores. Game tied at two. Still on the bottom of the third. Nick Kowal will come around to score again on a wild throw that was thrown down toward third base. But the Minnesota, with a huge seven-run eighth inning, comes back to win 11-7. NDSU will next square off in a four-game series this weekend at IPFW. With just nine conference games left, the Bison had a one-game lead going into the weekend. They took on UMKC on a blustery Saturday. This one will be decided by big hit. To Ellig Sports Complex now, the Bison and UMKC will start off in the bottom of the second with the game tied at two. Christina Boric hits a double down the line. Taylor Mortensen is coming around all the way from first to score. The Bison go up three to two. We'll jump to the bottom of the fourth now. Two runners on. Katie Tamayo rips into one here. Left center field. It'll hit the top of the wall and go over for a three-run home run. Bison up six to two. The Bison will hang on to win the first game of the series seven to five. In the second game of the series, the Bison win 4-0. And in the third game of the series, the Bison fall 6-4 in a record tying 12 innings. A congratulations is in order once again to Amy Anderson as she repeated as Summit League champion earlier this week. 
Anderson shot a three-day total of 218, including a third-round 76 to beat Southern Utah's Monica Jung by three strokes. NDSU also placed well as a team, claiming second overall behind Oral Roberts. NDSU snapped the previous school record 302 by eight shots on the final day, shooting a new team record 294. NDSU shot a team total 913 for the 54 holes, good enough for another team record, beating the old record by 14 strokes. <laughs> Women's announced two resignations this week. Assistant coaches Jamie Berry and Allie Pritchard have announced that they will no longer help coach for the Bison. Barry was primarily in charge of scheduling and scouting, while Pritchard was in charge of recruiting efforts. The Bison finished 11 and 20 last season and finished fifth place in the Summit League. Well, back to the green and gold game now. Good to see that uh, the defenses were holding strong. You know, not a lot of not a lot of offensive fireworks, but uh, good defensive performing on both sides. Hey, defense wins championships, right? Which is uh, which is what we just did. I'm glad that we had so many fans supporting our Bison team. Yeah, record performance. They also got to see the ring ceremony. All the players get the ring from the national championship. So uh, great to see. It was a great game. Great, uh, great day overall. As well. It really was. Well, coming up, some of NDSU's students are folding paper to try to bring hope to victims of disaster in Japan. Up, throws deep. Holloway is there at the five. Cut at the two. Good start. Bison. Jimmy Johns? Who ordered Jimmy Johns? Jimmy Johns, America's favorite sandwich delivery guys. There's always something happening on the NDSU campus. Catch it all on SUTV News on Cable One Channel 14. Brought to you in part by Shields and Stop and Go. Some NDSU students are helping those in need after f over 5,000 miles away. The Thousand Wishes for Japan campaign has been going on this week at a contact table at Memorial Union. At the table, students and faculty can learn to make a small origami paper crane for the cause. The campaign and cranes are meant to be a symbol of caring for the victims of the earthquake and tsunami that ravaged the island country last spring. After completion, the 1,000 campaigns will be sent to be splayed at a shelter in Fukushima, Japan. For those students who are participating, their hope is that the cranes will bring hope to the many victims of the disaster. I think this is going to be a lot of meaning for them that because nobody is going to ex expect, like, Fargo, North Dakota, you know, are sending this kind of stuff to um, Japan. Well, a thousand cranes, and uh, it doesn't sound like it'd be a very big thing, but I saw the box, it was actually pretty impressive. That is impressive, I mean, especially from uh, coming from students from Fargo, North Dakota. You wouldn't expect it. Yeah, so far away, um, supporting people that are also very far away. Well, I hope it, uh, hope it brings hope to the, uh, the country. I know that they've had a lot of... Uh, a lot of adversity the last year. Yeah, year. I wonder how long it would take to make a big box full of cranes like that. There's four students working pretty much nonstop right now. Thank you for watching SUTV News. Be sure to pick up your copy of The Spectrum. We'll leave you with some video of a flash mob at NDSU. Have a great night. <laughs>